are the best practices when it comes to LinkedIn? Um, optimize your profile. Again, this cannot be said enough, just like we talked about in Facebook, okay? You need to make sure your profile is fully <coughs> functional. It contains all the information about the company, what you do, your products, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Second, expand your network of influencers. So what, happen in, what happens in LinkedIn is there are a bunch of people out there that are influencers, okay? You'll actually see it on their profile. LinkedIn has actually given them a specific tag of influencer, okay? So if there's a certain number of followers and certain number of engagement, LinkedIn automatically gives them that title of influencer. And when that title comes, you need to make sure in your LinkedIn network you have at least a good bit of influencers because if you have it, automatically the number of people linking to you will increase. Uh, recently, I observed uh, uh, there was a message which I just simply followed based on the directions that they had. And one of the things that they said is include uh, increase your number of influencers. And they uh, prompted me to select a few of them. They happen not to be in this part of the world. <laughs> they are from the western part of the world. I just click them uh, and I have a couple of influencers whom actually technically I don't know <laughs> them. So how does that work actually, typically? So see, this is a network, right? This is just networking. So a lot of influencers just create networks. Now, is it that they have uh, mapped, uh, you know, my type of work to, you know, people in the industry who would, who would correlate with them and then, you know, yeah. tagging, uh, yeah. is that so what they're, they're doing? So they're tracking who, you, who you're networking with usually, okay, and what kind of, uh, work do you have, all that kind of stuff, and then suggest influencers to you, right? So, or they will look at other people with similar profiles as you and who are their influencers, and they'll suggest those to you. So okay? these will eventually lead to the contacts that we're looking at? Yes. That, uh, or the people Yeah, because who... if an influencer uh, decides to share your post, Good. okay, it has huge effects. That's how The second is. is, lot of people create their network by going from one to the other. So what they'll do is they'll go to an influencer, see who's connected to that influencer, and then connect to them, right? So your, your link net, or LinkedIn network will grow just by being connected to that influencer. Okay. How can one become influencer? Like after some certain likes? No, after a certain number of people that follow you, okay? I don't remember the number, but it's a large number. Once they start following you, or you become an influencer. Third, uh, best practice, share with your network. So just by creating a LinkedIn profile, by having network doesn't mean anything unless you share something with that network, okay? Uh, maybe it's the same content that you're sharing across other platforms, but it has to be shared with that network, okay? Deliver smart recommendations. Tell people, Okay, you know what, this may make sense for you. Okay, a lot of people like that. Okay, so if, you, if you're gonna connect with me and you're gonna provide a way for me to get more information by connecting to, um, let's say IBM's small business site, then recommend that. And I'll probably be more influenced and probably link better to you and be more um, engaged to you than otherwise. Mobilize your employees. This is a very good thing because what happens in LinkedIn is all your employees are on it, right? If they all contribute to your company page and start sharing it and liking it and doing that, even that will, will create a huge amount of kind of just people getting to know your brand, okay? Simply just by your employees because they will have different set of networks. You will have different set of networks, okay? And they'll start to create a kind of a rift, right? The, the whole bunch of people will start to know. Demonstrate thought leadership. Now, I just told you that uh, LinkedIn is now allowing you to publish articles. So how do you create thought leadership? How do you tell the world, I'm smart? Basically, that's what it's saying, right? The way is you write it. You write articles about it. You give your opinion, right? LinkedIn gives you an opportunity to do that. So make sure you demonstrate thought leadership. Uh, most uh, companies are now starting to publish 
one or another article at least once a week on LinkedIn. Not just on other platform, but LinkedIn as well, because they want to be shown as a thought leader. Okay. Attract followers. So you know that follow button that LinkedIn has? You need to have it everywhere, as many places as possible, so that you can attract more and more followers. Okay. And lastly, use SlideShare for visual thinkers. So if you have some visual thinkers as part of your audience, right, and they don't understand LinkedIn, then use SlideShare, because SlideShare works just as well with LinkedIn. Okay. And before we get to LinkedIn and actually just see LinkedIn itself, ultimately, how do you measure the impact in LinkedIn? Okay. So one is social actions, people liking it, okay, people sharing it, people viewing it, a whole bunch of social actions are there. And then LinkedIn has a concept called a content marketing score. Okay, so on the right hand side is kind of an example of that score. Okay, that, so that one gets seven of 10, right? And what does it look at? It looks at who's engaged to you, okay? Then it compares you to peers, others like you, okay? And thirdly, it will suggest improvements. Based on that, it's gonna give you a score. Okay, and this score is what determines how well you're doing. Okay. Then, obviously, you have your click-through rates, how many people click through. Okay, you have your cost per click, your cost per thousand. So if you're paying by a click, your cost per click. If you're paying by CPM, where's your cost per thousand? Okay. And then lastly, what's your cost per lead? very similar to every other platform. Here, the only thing different is we're talking about a content marketing score, which doesn't exist on other platforms, maybe. Okay. Any questions? No? Yeah. You just uh, told, like, uh, build, uh, <clears throat> demonst demonstrate thought leadership. So, like, in Quora, like, people ask many questions. So, th th that plaf platform is more of a question, if we, like, if uh, we are building a service platform, if we answer question there, then that would be more of a beneficial, like, LinkedIn also we should have, but Quora also for building thought le leadership, is it, like, uh, prevailing? Quora is definitely a good place also, but when we talk about LinkedIn, um, because this is a professional network, and Quora is open. All right. All right. So this is a professional network. Here, your articles would have to deal with some industry issue. It would talk about benefits. It would talk about best practices. Something that says that I know a little more than someone else, thus developing that thought leadership. Just simply answering question does not develop thought leadership. Right? You have to say that this is uh, my opinion, um, 10 best ways to do this, best practices. Then you develop that thought leadership. All right? Sir, on LinkedIn, when you ask to update the data, there are they ask for other email options yes. or other accounts you have. Yes. So can we use that data? It's good to use that or? Yeah, I mean, if, you, if, you, if you're trying to expand your network, yes, definitely. Because what it does is it uses that to figure out who else is connected to you somehow and starts to build your network a little bigger. Yeah. The other part of that is they're also doing it so that they can get more IDs. So to them, it's also beneficial. So for that reason only, we were not doing. <laughs> Again, they, they, if they don't get it from you, they'll get it from somewhere else. Okay? So I'm okay. I'll just share it. Let them show me. Uh, ultimately, there are 400 somewhat million uh, LinkedIn users. How many of them that are on my profile and not on theirs is the real question. <laughs> right? So it's okay. You know what? We've all been asking, right? When we talk about digital marketing, we talk about digital advertising, anything. Uh, when it comes to B2B, right? Most of our topics are around B2C. When it comes to B2B, let's ask one of our domain experts, Pratap Bose. Uh, Pratap heads a large uh, digital uh, as well as an ad agency. Uh, let's ask him what his thought is when it comes to platforms like LinkedIn, right? That's the only thing we've talked about when it comes to B2B marketing. So let's ask Pratap what his thoughts are. Pratap, what are your thoughts on using LinkedIn as B2B marketing for our participants here? Because you know what? There's actually no other platform that we've been able to identify beyond LinkedIn. 
Yeah, so I think uh, on B2B and B2C, um, I think the new word, the new, uh, the new mantra is uh, B2B is the new B2C. Uh, and you've got to realize that because a lot of my, uh, businesses are in the B2B space. So LinkedIn is just another social media platform which really connects broadly on the hiring and poaching platform if I want to, <laughs> to add. Uh, I think social media together with data and analytics is key for B2B businesses. Yeah? Uh, and if I gave you and told you that I know the name, phone number and email address of everyone in Bombay who owns an iPhone 6 or an iPhone 6s. That data is available. Yeah? It's what I do with that data and, and obviously working with the data scientists come to a very strong targeting uh, mix where I'm talking only to that consumer base. Yeah? So for example, if I want to download an app for only cardiovascular surgeons, I can do it today. It will not go to any GP practitioner. It will only go to cardiac specialists. Yes, the cost of that download may be 600 rupees a download, vis-a-vis -vis the av industry average at about 120. Uh, but specific targeting in the B2B business, it's really a combination of social media, of course, but social media backed by data and analytics. If you do the two, um, it re it's irrelevant which, which B2B business you are in, you can uh, get into it. Guys, Pitab has some differing views on this, right? Pitab says that it's not only about LinkedIn, it's about data. But you know what I would like to do is I would actually like to reach out to Harish. Uh, if you remember Harish Kibriwala from uh, his company, which called Social Webland, now acquired by WPP called Miram. Uh, he may have a different perspective on it. And let's ask Harish what he thinks about LinkedIn as the platform for advertising or marketing for B2B. Harish, we heard some perspective from Pratap from Social Street. I actually want to hear your perspective on using LinkedIn as the marketing platform for B2B businesses. Oh, absolutely. You know, if you look at B2C, B2C businesses have lots of opportunities to communicate to the consumer, whether it is mainline, TV, print, Google. But when it comes to B2B, it is literally like finding needles in a haystack, which is where platforms like LinkedIn are brilliantly used to ensure that the right kind of people are able to communicate with the, with the right kind of people. You know, People think of LinkedIn like a recruitment platform. That is just one source of revenue. To, to me, LinkedIn really is a lead nurturing platform, where over a period of time, you are able to lead, nurture, you know, a prospect and convert it into business. Guys, okay, like I said, both of them have very differing views. But you know, if you ask me, I think they're pointing out to the same thing at the end of the day. What they're saying is you've got to go where your customers are, okay? And data is going to tell you that. Pratap made that as a point. He said it doesn't mean that we use LinkedIn. He said wherever, whatever our data shows is what we got to do. And I think Harish is just saying it in another word. He's saying go to LinkedIn because that's where your audience is, your customers are. So I think they both ultimately, even though they sound differing, are pointing to the same thing.